Hey guys, and welcome back to the show, Law of Attraction podcast. I'm in the studio with an amazing friend of mine, somebody who is, I would say, one of the biggest inspirations on planet Earth. He has done more than most people will do in three lifetimes. He's so cool. Zion Clark was born September the 29th, 1997, which makes him 25, by the way, right now, if you're listening to this, in Columbus, Ohio, with a rare birth defect called caudal regression syndrome, which caused him to be born without legs, given up for adoption at a young age. Crazy story, which you're going to hear about in the show, and we're going to tell you all about how he changed around his life, how he changed his life in a dramatic way and became the number one wrestler. And he's like one of the top wrestlers in the whole of the United States. He is such a champ. He's amazing. He's an amazing musician. He's somebody that you need to get to know, you need to learn from, you want to understand. Zion had to fend for himself from a young age and his childhood was a recipe for disaster. So you're going to hear today in the show all about how he got through that childhood, the things that he did to get through that awful time he went through and who he is today and how he's helping other kids in the world and inspiring so many people. We are so excited to bring onto the show today through resiliency and consistency, Zion Clark. (laughs) Welcome to the show. I'm so happy you're here. I've been so looking forward to this show. Yeah, me too. It's been, uh, I've seen a lot of your stuff for a while. So uh, I'm like, really excited. Honestly. Me too. Well, when we were both at Dan's event, Dan was here literally like for the third time he's been on the show. He was here like three weeks ago again. Um, when we were both speaking at his event, I was like, who is that? I was like, he's so <laughs> talented. <laughs> you really are like music and wrestling and everything you're achieving. Like, you're such an inspiration. And you're doing it at such a young age. That's what's really impressive to me. See, I never really understood why people are so um, in awe about like how young I am. You know, when you have a passion for something, you just get to it. You know. Yeah. Well, I feel like I've achieved a lot of what you know, like people are doing in their like 40s and 50s. Mm-hmm. People is looking at me like, "Whoa, how did you do that so fast?" And it's like, well, so I love what I do." And I just exactly <laughs> there, there it is that part. Right. You just go for it. Yeah. Like when you when you love something so much, I feel like. It's just who you are. That's what people don't understand. Like, I don't just do music or fight or wrestle or speak or all this, all the crap that I do because I just think it's like something fun to do. No, I actually uh, have a passion for it. And, you know, I speak to big crowds. I make music. I work with artists. I do a lot of cool things to where, you know, I'm not doing it because, like, I want to be seen. I don't, I, I could care less to be seen. I've been making music since I was three years old. I've been wrestling since I was six. Wow. You know, so, and I'm 25 now. So it's, like, if, if you're thinking that I'm doing it to be seen, you're completely mistaken. Because mm-hmm. before you even knew I was doing it, I was doing it. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Okay, so let's start with wrestling. Because mm-hmm. you are pretty much the number one wrestler in the United States. You hold such an amazing title, and you're great to watch. So tell us more about your wrestling career? Uh, it's been a long time. I started when I was six and I lost over 200 times, if I'm gonna be honest about that. Uh, spent the first about 10, 12 years of my career not winning, getting beat up, getting just kicked all the time. So <laughs> uh, I had to work really hard. And when I was like 17, 18, I just kind of trained every day, two or three times a day, seven days a week. Um, that's that summer before my final year of high school. I had no life, no friends. Uh, so I just was like, I'm gonna go to the mat. My mom's like, get a job. I said, no. She said, okay, go train. I said, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and you did. I, I, I did more than that. Uh, you know, I'd be the one, I'd come home at night and just fall asleep at the bottom of the steps and wake up, take a shower, go do the same thing the next day. Wow. And you know, when it came around to my high, final high school career, I started getting international, national attention. Cause I went from being this dude that nobody really cared about, nobody knew to beating the number one guy in the country, being the number one guy in, the, in my state. You know, wow. it was a uh, complete like three, like three, like 180, you know, I was completely turned the other way and I'd figured out, I, something had clicked and I'd figured out uh, what I can do in the sport. Uh, next thing you know, I'm in the district championships, trying to make it to the state championships. I ended up losing, 
lost to the number one guy in the country uh, again. You know, I beat him earlier that year. Lost again. Lost to him when it really mattered. He beat me one to zero in triple overtime in a sudden death round, and uh, that gave that kind of opened the door for college, surprisingly. Wow. And next thing you know, I went to Kent State, decided not to redshirt, and then I just, uh, you know, became a true freshman. And I had a pretty good good start of my uh, career, you know, it was really awesome. And then, you know, at, at Kent State, you know, you get to that college level, it's, you're, you're not wrestling kids anymore, you're not kids wrestling. You know, in like these earlier stages, youth, middle school, high school, there could be, you could wrestle a guy that's really good and then wrestle a guy that's not good at all. Mm -hmm. In college, everybody's just as good as you or better. And most of the time, they're usually better because they've been there longer, especially if you're a freshman. Because uh, usually freshmen don't usually start the first year. Mm -hmm. So I was definitely ahead of the game a little bit. And then by the time I, you know, I became a regional champion and then got put third seeded at nationals, took third at the national championships. Wow. And uh, did it again the next year. <laughs> <laughs> and that was it. It just kept on happening and yeah. growing. That's amazing. Have you ever lost your confidence with anything, like with wrestling? Have you ever like gone through a time where you feel like you've had to just fight back? You've had to just be like, no, I can do this. This is what I'm meant to do. Yeah, no, I've had, I've had my ups and downs in the sport. Wrestling is one of the hardest sports on the planet. Uh, it's the oldest sport on the planet uh, dating back to ancient times. You go to ancient Greece, see a statue of two people wrestling. You look at a picture of Jordan Burroughs. He's uh, dubbed the king of wrestling right now. Uh, he's one of the most accomplished wrestlers on the planet, multiple-time Olympic champ. Uh, and he, there's a picture of him hitting the same move. And then there's a picture of a statue in ancient Greece. And they're identical. Wow. And he's like, what, 35, 36? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so like he, like it's, it's like it, wrestling transcends time. Yeah, it does. And uh, so I'm saying, like, so with that being said, yeah, it's been hard. But here's the thing, if you're really committed to the sport and you love it, you're gonna get back up regardless. My coaches and my teammates, they really played a big part in my uh, growth in the sport because uh, there were times where I was just like, this is stupid, this is dumb, I don't wanna do it. And then they like get me to get back in there, get back in there, get back in there. And they really took the time with me. You know, when practice would be over, they'd be working with me like an hour after practice, just one-on-one, one-on-one, one-on-one. -on -one, one -on -one constantly drilling constantly conditioning because i couldn't figure out what it was that why i was losing and so like they helped me figure out what i was what i could do to win you know and after that you, you know you develop a mindset of like oh yeah my body hurts my face hurts who cares <laughs> you know mm, interesting do you feel like that's given you the foundation for the person that you are today because i feel like you are so so like amazing, confident, you just like ooze empowerment. You're just like, everywhere you go, you have this aura, right? So do you feel like the wrestling, the way you were conditioned in that way has played a big part in who you are? Oh, absolutely. My uh, coach, he always told me this. He's like, if you can accomplish big things in wrestling, life should be easy. Mm. Because, you know, it's like, trust me, trying to throw somebody that's trying to throw you mm -hmm. is really difficult. Yeah. You know, if you can overcome that, and be the last one standing and still be respectful and you know learn good sportsmanship uh that transcends past the sport years after you're done you know i'm probably not going to be an athlete too much longer probably got another 10 years under my belt and then i'm done yeah really i've been in this a long time wow <laughs> how interesting but so there's um, like a timeline for it oh there's a where all of us if you're a martial artist there's a definite time limit mm. uh you know you don't see a 40 year old in the ring uh, unless you're like Floyd or mm -mm. Mike or somebody doing mm -hmm. it for fun, but mm -hmm. you don't see somebody actively competing past like 35 to 40. Wow. Uh, so like I said, I'm, I'm kind of running out of time a little bit, but I've yeah. also done a lot so far. So now it's time to make this final push, become a champ again. And uh, Again? <laughs> So good. <laughs> no, I'm so excited it. for you. And you just had an amazing fight, which was epic. <laughs> Love it. Okay, I want to go into a deeper topic because mm -hmm. loads of people have been affected by this in their own ways in, you know, I have my audience who listen. And I've had so many girlfriends and guy friends, actually, who have been adopted. And I know that you were adopted. Mm -hmm. 
Do you feel like that was something that was hard for you to deal with? Absolutely. And that's another one of those things. On top of uh, just struggling as an athlete growing up, I struggled with having a family. You know, I didn't know my parents. I didn't have a family uh, growing up. I was in and out of being homeless. I was in and out of being in the foster care system for 17 years. Wow. Sometimes I didn't know where I was going to sleep. Sometimes I didn't know what I was going to eat. And um, it definitely breeds, it's either going to break you or it breeds toughness. Because, mm. you know, when it comes to the foster care system, a lot of these kids, if they don't get adopted, they end up on the street at 18 or younger with the trash bag with just a few of their belongings. And they're left. They're just like, all right, here you go. Good luck. Mm. And, um, you know, I'm trying to, I've been bringing a lot of attention to it. I've been talking to some of the biggest foster care organizations in the, in the country, trying to get them all on the same wavelength as myself to really help these kids. And to give them opportunities, whether they get adopted or not, give them a foundation so they can go out and still become something, you know, aside from giving them a trash bag and putting them out in the street. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, 80 to 90 percent of foster kids that don't get adopted end up dead or in prison. That's where I was headed. So I'm extremely blessed to be in the position that I'm at right now. So I'm using my power and my position to bring awareness to this and start my own foundation so we can start helping these kids on a countrywide scale. That is so, so beautiful. And I'm so happy you are doing it because I, you know, I have so many people who are struggling with abandonment issues and, you know, a lot of my clients and students that I take care of. And I'm always talking around this area of how to overcome it and mm -hmm. how to love yourself and just know that they were, whoever, like, you know, we went through it back then is because they were doing the best that they could. And they couldn't do any better because they didn't know any better and they couldn't be any better, but you can. And now you have the blessing to then share your message like Absolutely. you're doing with the world. And the best thing is you're going to share with, you are already sharing with the world how they can overcome their things. And it's like, hey, listen, if I can fucking do this, you can. Like if I can overcome what I have, you can. I always say to people like my journey when I was at rock bottom, I mean, I was like, I didn't have a roof over my head at my worst time. You know, it was a very dark place and I was just like trying to get by. I was in a lot of debt. I was at rock bottom, like broke. It was a really, really bad place to be in. And I remember feeling suicidal thinking, how am I getting out of here? But I knew if I focused on the bad side of it, it was just gonna make it worse, cause Absolutely. it does, right? So you have to look at a problem as a series of smaller challenges that you have to overcome. Even though you actually don't have anything around you and resources to be able to get out, but there is a way out. There's always some kind of small step you can take. And then the next day, take another step. Absolutely, and that's what I try to tell people, you know. Uh, my In my situation, I was just grateful, like I was still alive, honestly. Yeah. So. Uh, there were times where, like, I was being starved to the point where, like, you could see my rib cages. I had no muscle. Like, this is early years. Uh, I was completely malnourished. And then on top of that, I was being beat at home, and I was just, I had all these bruises. I, I have scars from back then all, all over my body to prove that point even further. But, like, at the time, I, I could have definitely folded. And even now, I could have I could have that chance to tell people, like, oh, I feel bad for myself. I shouldn't have went through all that. No, I did, and I should have, because this is who I am now, because I have the ability to go help you. That's so beautiful. I love that. That should be your motto. It probably already is. <laughs> like, I live my life by, like, everything I'm doing and everything I've been through is for you. Like I've been through what I've been through, the traumas, so that I can help another person. And if um, I always, you know, wonder when I had, I had an illness, right? I went through a really bad time. I had autoimmune disease and it was a hyperactive thyroid and it had me in bed for a lot of the year. I had it, it was so bad in my worst point. And I remember thinking, why is this happening to me? For the first six months, I was like, why me, why me, why me? And I went, no, I get it. I get it. I have this platform. I'm meant to share this with the world. Yeah. It took me away to smash my ego, to say, get rid of your ego, get rid of who you thought you were, and now you're gonna go through a pressure cooker and you're gonna become somebody else. I knew like I am gonna become a better person. I'm gonna break through this and become somebody better. Do you feel like you've been through more things in like your adulthood now or in your childhood that have like shaped that journey? Oh, I've been way through more in my childhood. You know, um, I didn't have any peace in my life till I was about 18. And I'm only 25. You gotta think, aside from this allotment of time, wow. most over half of my life has been pure chaos and just <laughs> shit, honestly. So. Oh my God. <laughs> so now you're like, finally, I'm in a place where I've had my lessons and now I'm gonna show yeah. my love and, and he, just like. And even in the last couple of years, like I've really had to figure out some, some things. Uh, and I would say just in the last like three and a half years, 
I finally have like a solid grip on what I want to do, you know, and now I'm like in rooms with all these high level people that are looking at me for inspiration. And that's not even just them from kids like I walking in here, kids on the street. You're that guy. Oh, you're my that God. Dude. You know what I mean? Oh, my God. And that's beautiful. It's just to see like to see the difference. And just a couple of years ago, I walked down the street. Nobody said nothing. And I don't care about that. But the. When it comes to kids, you know, it definitely... Yeah. It, it, they need someone it, to it, look up to. Yeah. And it feels good for you. I know the feeling. It feels good. like you feel like I'm helping them change their life. Yeah, because, you know, kids are very impressionable, so... So are you going to release anything with music? Yeah, I'm, uh, I've been uh, working with some people. Uh, I'm in talks with a few different companies to see what we can do. Um, because, like, you know, I have a whole setup at my crib, you know. I got my keyboard, I got my guitar, I got my drum machine, I have my drum set uh, with my oh, fifth yeah. drum I've set. I've seen you do the drums. Yeah. Oh my God, you're so good. That's my number one. Yeah, I can tell. I yeah. felt like there was a vibe. That's funny you say it. I saw it and I was like, that's his gig. Like, but you could do the whole thing. Oh yeah, I can rip it on the guitar, I can rip it on the bass guitar and play the trumpet, <laughs> the saxophone and all the stuff. So. Oh my God, please <laughs> drop a song. That would be amazing. I want to, so I just, I need the resources. So I'm just kind of, because I don't want to just be like, hey, help me make this. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah, I wanna, yeah. I want the right people around Yeah, me. yeah, 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 the for right sure. type of system. Okay, we'll talk after, because yeah. we might have some mutual people. There's other that, musicians that who have been on this show who will probably be, yeah, this, there's definitely some overlap, I'm sure. I love uh, connecting people. Do you have any morning rituals? Like, do you do anything in your day that, maybe not necessarily in the morning, but I know morning is usually the one for people where it feels like this is the thing that I do in the morning and this is why I do it. No, I kind of roll out of bed, take my dog out and hop in the car and go to practice. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so not the morning. I'm, I'm not like a morning person per se. Like I wake up early, I just kind of sit there and collect myself. Yeah, 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 and yeah. Craig's awake, I talk to Craig and be like, hey, what do, we, what do I have to do today? <laughs> That's so good. <laughs> Yeah, Craig, for anyone that like doesn't know, is awesome. I've met him and he's like always with C and it's so cool. So we live together. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I and he's amazing. So you guys can't see him right now, but you can hear him. He's really cool and he has a really great accent as well. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, cool. So do you have a do you actually do any other practices in your day? Do you do any like Okay, so this is the law of attraction, right? So we believe mm -hmm. that even if you don't know you're doing it, which is the truth with you, you probably don't even know you're doing it, but maybe you do and I'd love to hear about it. It's happening in your life because you're so positive. You're creating your reality around you. That is intentionally designing your reality. That's wow. Um, I don't know if I have anything like I intentionally do or I think I don't intentionally do. You know, it's more so... I try to just like be myself at all times, you know. I don't authenticity. Try to, I don't try to like put on no fake fronts or nothing like that. If I'm having a bad day and I look like a bum, it's probably because I'm having a bad day mm -hmm. and I look like a bum, <laughs> you know. So like, uh, you know, and I got like I said, I'm a fighter. That's like my life is really circulated around martial arts and music. So I try to like I portray a lot of how I feel and a lot of my energy goes into that, and you know that's. Uh, mainly as a martial artist, you look at my level of fame or whatever, uh, that's what put me on the map. Mm -hmm. And that's what's constantly kept me on the map for the most part. So it's, uh, you know, it's what I circulate my life around. You know, I get to talk to kids. I get to inspire other athletes to do better and be better. And like, you know, I attract athletic people. I attract athletes. I attract kids that want to be athletes, you know, and Beautiful. it's something that I absolutely love doing. So. It's so powerful. I love that. You are an inspiration. Okay, so therefore, you believe through your ways somewhat that just through you being you and showing up as you, you're inspiring others. So that's amazing. Absolutely, because inspiration isn't about what you say to people always. Sometimes it's about just the actions you take. 100%. I would say to people, your legacy is not what you did for someone, it's what you leave in them. Absolutely. Like that, what's that feeling that you leave in them? Do you feel fired up? Like when I'm around you, I feel fired up. I'm like, <laughs> yes, I feel alive, yeah, right? Yeah. That's the law of attraction in action. Absolutely. It's just, it's a universal law that's happening all the time. And so whether or not you know about it, whether or not you believe in it, it's like if your life's great, you're obviously doing something right. Because the people who are 
having issues in their lives and going through chaos and like constantly going through breakups and another breakup and the same person dressed in different clothing over and over and all this shit that you hear about. And even like financially, it's probably because their thoughts are not in the right place. Their actions are also not in the right place and their habits for sure aren't in the right place. Yeah. So I can tell you have good habits every day. Yeah, no, I try to I try to stay calm. I don't do nothing out of the, nothing too crazy. You know, again, I'm 25. I go have my fun. But, you know, aside from that, I, I'm really focused and I'm really, like, driven to, to like, you know, do better and, and com- like, constantly, com- constantly upgrade myself, I would say. You know, and with the help of, like, the support system, my family, my team, Craig, everybody that I surround myself mm-hmm. with and my friends that I've made out here and my friends that I've grown up with, mm-hmm out in Ohio that they they understand what I'm trying to do. I don't have to talk to them all the time uh, because I'm just trying to live, you know? Yeah. Because uh, at the end of the day, you take everything away from what I'm doing. I'm, I'm just me and I'm still happy. So. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Happiness is everything. What's your superpower? I'm fast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're, you're fast. I like that. Okay, your necklace. I love it. When you walked in, what does it say for anyone who's not watching right now? It says Tyson. And what's the story behind it? Uh, I was on Strain Reviews. Go ahead and check that out. Um, what is it? If you guys want to see a different side of me, it's funny. <laughs> <laughs> but check out Strain Reviews with Mike Tyson. And Okay, um, we'll add a link to it below. Uh, I went and smoked a bunch of pot with him. <laughs> 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 on a video? Yeah, on video. What are you passionate about right now? No, I feel like a broken record, but I'm so passionate about fighting. Like, I've, mm. I have destroyed my body and built it back up and destroyed it again wow. and built it back up. Uh, I've broken bones and healed myself to come back stronger. Not on purpose, but, like, it's just yeah. it's the name of the game. And that's, like, I'm so passionate about fighting that, like, you know, I'm probably one of the few people that in the heat of a fight, if you hit me with a good punch and, like, you know, knock me around a little bit, I might start smiling right before <laughs> I hit you back. So. <laughs> <laughs> Don't. Like, don't be fooled like <laughs> like i'm calm but like like i'm telling you me and me when i'm not in you know nice clothes or nothing and i'm in my and i'm in my gear and i'm like in go mode not that nice of a person but like that's that's like that's me that's <laughs> but you, like that's you say, the fighter I, yeah i like to say that like that's my passion i like to i have a thirst for beating somebody up and this is where i can do it and get paid for it and Give the like, crowd a good time. So. Oh my god, I love it! I want to come watch you at your next one. Absolutely. I would so be there, like ringside. Like, oh my <laughs> god, I love that. Oh, I love this kind of thing. It's just so fun. Okay, so my final question to you is: What are you most proud of in your life? Given having the opportunity to be where I'm at today, you know, I completely have to thank my mom. You know, so her name is Kimberly Hawkins, by the way. Mm. Uh, uh, I love you, mom. I don't want to say that. Uh, mm. But, like, for real, like, if it wasn't for my mom stepping in to adopt me at the very last second, I guess I'd be in jail, I'd be homeless, or I'd be dead right now. Uh, I was about to be homeless right uh, right before she got me. They had said that, like, we're, we don't know where to put this kid. He's a problem child. He's been he's been in and out of juvenile detention and all this crap, like, for, throughout my years that I had. And, like, but I wasn't given any guidance. So like, I was just like, I was thugging it out for real, if I'm gonna be real. And um, yeah, my most proud moment was walking into the uh, courthouse and getting my last name changed. Wow, Yeah, that's so beautiful. That's so touching. Thank you for sharing so many amazing things with yeah. us. I love it. You really are special. But look, before we even like go and I, I could have you here all day, you have this amazing digital book right? Mm. You have this book coming. Can you tell us all about it? Yeah, it's um, called Why Can't I? And I'm building a, a community a community around it uh, to inspire people, you know? The whole, like it says, it's in the name of the book, Why Can't I? Uh-huh. You know, and with me being the basis, you know, I'm, I've done incredible things, with, uh, even though like I have this disease or condition or whatever. Um, and we want to inspire people to get up and get out there and really like do the best like they possibly can yeah you know if like if you're if you're doing a podcast why can't i Mm -hmm. love that if you're making music why can't i oh so good if you're writing a book why can't i Mm -hmm. you know it's 
Like it's literally it's it says it in the name, mm-hmm. <laughs> and I'm really excited uh, to work with my team and everybody that's making this come together, and uh, just be ready for it because I want it, it's gonna hit every show, it's gonna blow up, and I'm excited. Ah, we're so excited. Well, maybe we'll put a link below if there's anything you guys wanna learn more with C. He'll teach you and show you, and I for sure love everything I see on your social media all the time, so we'll put all your handles below so everyone can follow you and hit him up. Make him be like, whoa, they're blowing my DMs up. (laughs) (laughs) Blow his DMs up, we love that. Oh, I've had so much fun with you, and good luck with your fighting. We wanna hear how it goes and come back again with like more champ status and- Absolutely. Yeah. King, amazing. Thank you. Yeah, babe. See you soon. Thank you for coming. Thanks for having me.